Hello and welcome to the Brown Therapist Podcast with your host here, Yamilka Rodriguez. I'm so excited about my guest today, Jason Wojo. And um, we're gonna I'm gonna read the bio before we get started. Jason first came to Life on Air as a student in 2009. On the surface, he appeared successful and by most external measures seemed to be living the dream. But behind closed doors was an unhappy, stressed, overworked, and desperate to, to live life on his own terms. With the help of Life and Air, Jason was able to turn everything around, reinvent himself and his business, and design a life of true joy, passion, fulfillment, and freedom. His gratitude for Life on Air message and philosophy, along with the desire to empower and encourage others, led him to become the Titanum coach, working with some of the country's most successful business owners and investors, then lead um, event instructor, and now he runs his own company in CEO. He has been blessed with a beautiful wife, three daughters. Oh, you have a house full of women there. A wiener dog named Rusty and lives in North Carolina. Welcome, Jason. I am super excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Okay, so we want to know what is life on air? I know it's like millionaire or billionaire, but it's life on air. Tell us about right. what that is. Yeah, so so uh, and you actually said it really well. So so a life in error is like a millionaire except a lot of life. Now, I want to make a distinction because people hear this and they're like, "Well, that sounds great, but I also want to have money too." And I'm like, and, and that's where I want to be clear. We're not against having money. And in fact, a lot of life in errors I know are millionaires, but very few millionaires I know are life in errors. And so we want you to have the money. We want you to 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 have a fantastic business and income, all those things. But we don't want you to sacrifice your life in the process of pursuing those things. And so that's what we're all about. It's like how to how to create the life you want. And then uh, secondly, then we'll talk about business and how to create that uh, support stream of income for your life. Awesome. I love it. Love it. So here at the Brand Therapist Podcast, we do one thing. I had you take a test and you came out as a caregiver. So I like to read the um, the the caregiver for you, and you. I want you to tell me what you feel around that, and then we're going to go to to for you to define some of these words for us. So a caregiver sees the need in the world and is attracted to experiences that make them feel needed and appreciated. The motivation is family. The need is to support others. The fear is lack of understanding. And the behaviors is cares about working closely with others, draw sincere concern about people's well-being and personal development. Yeah. 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 That's that I'd say that 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 very close, very, very uh very accurate. Awesome. Okay, so um I have a few of the words and I want you to describe them how you would define them, right? This is not a dictionary definition, it's more like what does Jason say this word means to him? Okay, helpful. Helpful is somebody who contributes in a meaningful way to someone who has a challenge or a problem or an issue or a lack of something where you have the ability to contribute to them and, and, and make a difference for them in that specific area. Responsible. Responsible to me means that uh, two things. One is that we all have responsibility over ourselves more than anything else in this world where things can be outside of our control. But more than that, responsible to me means stewarding the gifts, the blessings, the talents, the treasures that we have been, um, I believe, gifted with, and we have a responsibility to do something with those um, and, and that's, that's something that each of us has, regardless of where we are in life and at what stage. Empathetic. Empathetic to me means being able to not just identify with someone and know what it's like and, and, but also be there with them and experience that with them so that you can connect with them on a, on a meaningful level. That's not from a higher position. For instance, it's not, it's not you reaching down to somebody, but you being on a level with them. Uh, of equals that you can help them with whatever understanding, whatever it is they're facing. Nurturing. Mm, nurturing. So to me, nurturing means a, a, a gentle, um, 
a gentle, continual, uh, a, 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 not, what's the word I'm looking for? A, uh, a gentle, uh, consistent, um, loving, encouraging, um, supportive role, um, in, in someone's journey. Like, so you're, you're there with them. You're nurturing them along this path. And the last one is supportive. Yeah. Supportive to me means, um, it, it, it means giving someone the, the framework, the a foundation, a solid place or thing, or, uh, even, even just a, a shoulder, for instance, of, giving them whatever they need to succeed and achieve their goals, whatever they may be. And so sometimes supportive can mean, it can mean tough love. It can mean accountability. It can mean ideas. It can be feedback. It could be encouragement. Uh, I think all of those to, to me consider uh, are under that, under that umbrella of support. I love it. I love it when this works. So tell me, uh, the other question I have for you is, you know, it wouldn't be a brand therapist podcast if we didn't talk about childhood. So tell me a yeah. story of your childhood that kind of got to where you are today. You know, um, for for me, for my for my childhood, one one thing that, and actually, this is something. Do you prefer if it's involving other people or myself or an adverse event, or what do you, what do you think is Yourself. most valuable for your audience? Yourself. Yeah. So, so, yep. So for me, um, one thing that I went through when I was, when I was younger was a, I, uh, I was, I was a, a teenager and I had been in a motorcycle accident where I was, I was run off the road and by an oncoming SUV and I dislocated my hip. I fractured some vertebrae in my back and the physician told me there was a really good chance I'd never walk again and I'd need a hip fusion. And you can imagine, like, you know, I was, I was athletic and I was young and I couldn't imagine having my hip fuse in an angle for the rest of my life. And the, and the thought of that, I mean, it was, would just cause me to weep, you know, and, and just think about my life being over. And then the doctor said, well, if, if, if that doesn't happen, and I said, well, so, so, so is this a guarantee? He's like, no, it's not a guarantee. It's a high probability. I'm like, well, what's, what, what else are some of the possibilities? And, and he said, well, you could need a hip replacement, you know, it, certainly like, you know, the, the damage that you've incurred has resulted in significant, you know, damage to your, to your hip joint. And so you'll probably need a hip replacement. And because the technology on these things isn't that great, you'll probably need one every, you know, 10 or 15 years. And so you'll have several of those for a lifetime. I said, well, what if that doesn't happen? What else could happen? He said, well, then you would definitely be, uh, you'd have debilitating arthritis and you'd be on pain meds, you know, the rest of your life. And when you hear those kinds of prognoses, you, especially as a young person coming from an authority, it can really cause you to, to, to I mean, just to just break down and, and, and think that the end, that's the end. Like that's, that, this is gonna be my life, but something with inside me and I, and I don't know what it was and I can't take credit for it, but I decided like, I'm not going to be that, that none of those are going to happen. And I, I refuse to accept that diagnosis. And so I remember I was still on crutches. I couldn't walk yet. I, I was on crutches for four months. Um, and I remember deciding to take this into my own hands and, you know, touching on responsibility that we talked about earlier. Right. And so I would, we, I, uh, I had access to a lake and so I'd go up on the end of that wharf on my crutches and I couldn't squat down because I had no leg strength. So I'd, I'd literally let myself fall into the water and I'd use my two arms and the one leg I did have to, to try to swim. And I, you know, the first, it was excruciating. And the first day I made it like five feet and then I went back to the dock and now I had to try to figure out how to get out of the water. But I went back the next day and then the next day. And that five feet went to 10 feet, went to 20 feet that I'd, and I swam. And over time, and this is a period of months, I was able to swim, you know, uninterrupted for a period of 45 minutes, an hour. Meanwhile, I'm, I'm rebuilding my hip strength. I'm doing it in a non-weight bearing way. And that's when it hit me that, None of us are doomed to what somebody else says we're, 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 that's, that's possible for us or that, that we're capable of. And don't let somebody else to tell you what you can do and what you can't do because forget, forget it. Like you, you decide. You have the responsibility. You have the ability to, to do incredible things that to others may seem impossible. Um, and, and so don't let those things hold you back like that. And that's something that I've carried with me throughout my life because you know, I, was, I was trained as a scientist. I went to school forever. 
I got a PhD in immunology from Duke. Uh, I have a master's degree, two PhD, two, two, two bad, all these degrees. And I was supposed to be a bench scientist. Meanwhile, you know, I get my first job and I, and I was uh, unhappy. I just didn't want to, I, I couldn't imagine living uh, in my life working for somebody else. And that's, that's a personal preference thing mm-hmm. for sure. People do love that. But for me, I knew it wasn't for me, but I, I had zero ability, zero business ex- experience, zero training. But I decided again, regardless of what people, people told me like, dude, just stay in the lab, go get a bar job for biotech, go teach a class, go do all these other things. And, and I didn't let other people's vision for me or other people's opinions define me. And so that experience for me way back when, and, and I'm not saying I want to repeat it again, you know, <laughs> but that was a pivotal moment for me in, in not letting people tell me no and just not taking no for an answer and just going for it anyway. I love that because I, I I love that story because it, it really, you know, it's really difficult when you get a prognosis from a doctor, right. That supposedly knows everything and you being able to say, Hey, I'm not going to listen to what you just said here. And I'm going to make this happen for myself. I mean, that's really, really difficult for us as, as human beings, because that's not the way that we function. Like if somebody says this, we just follow it. Right. And I think it feels to me like that's the same reason why you, you don't want to work for somebody else because you you don't want somebody telling you something and you have to follow that formula that for you could be a whole different set of possibilities and differentiation for yourself. So I, I, I think that might say something really specific about who you are as an individual. So for that, what would you say is your personal brand? What is your personal brand all about? So, and, and let me just finish that story too, by the way, here we are decades later and I don't have any of those things. Wow. I'm completely functional. I've, yeah, I, nothing has happened. And so, you know, and by you God's grace, great. nothing continues. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, I can, I can squat hundreds of pounds. I can go run, I can go walk. I'm doing all these activities. And, and, and so that for me has been just, just further verification that don't, don't, and listen, and sometimes what you said as well. These things come from qualified people who are experts. It doesn't matter. Don't listen to it. Many times, even you'll get advice from people that is not for, uh, not qualified. I mean, maybe it's somebody who loves you or who cares for you, and maybe that makes a difference for you. But you really got to just not, just don't. You got you got to follow your heart. You got to follow what you think is right, and regardless of what other people say. And so, to your question of personal brand, to me, I'm someone that I. I I stand for for independence. Um, that it, and actually, you know, independence mixed with interdependence, meaning like I have realized, and this is this is another huge lesson for me as well, is like um, I can't do it all on my own. But when I'm surrounded with other people that are successful, and I'm getting around people that can help me, uh, and and vice versa, it's the the way to do that uh, is is so much better than trying to do it all by yourself. And you know, so this is where I feel like you know an interdependent relationship uh, with others that you that you're again you're not you're not dependent on them, but you're not independent trying to do it all yourself. That's been that's been huge for me, as well as really mm-hmm. taking the initiative to find you know the words you mentioned you know caregiver right like I I'm actively looking for ways to help people. I genuinely like it when people succeed. Like I. Um, I remember at one point in my life, I, I was a real estate investor and I had just flipped a property and made like half my year's salary back from when I had a job. And I remember telling a friend and their response was like, after a moment of, of silence was like, well, it must be nice to be you. And that was hurtful because I, I genuinely like it when somebody tells me something good in their life. I'm not, I'm not jealous. I'm not envious. I'm mm-hmm. excited for them. It's amazing. We can all win together. And so... Yeah. That's a part of my brand as well is like helping others su- succeed and, and really being there to celebrate with them. And then again, the words you mentioned before, like, you know, nur- um, nurturing and supportive, being there to help people when they're down. Like this is the key to success. This is the key to passion and fulfillment in your life, I believe. Yeah, I love that you said that because, you know, I've it's been a hard road for me too. And when I started my business, I was just like, you know, whoever comes into my life, I'll take it. Nowadays, Mm. I'm more like, this has to be the right individual that wants to be able to, you know, give as much as I give, right? Because they'll have me 100% when they hire me. And I need that back from them too. And so it's a two-way street. 
And, and if they don't want it, then I don't, I'm not their person, right? If they don't want success or they don't want to fulfill these pieces, then that's not really my individual. Cause the more success they have, the more success I have. It's a, it's a back and forth street. So I, um, I totally agree with that. Um, the other thing you mentioned that I thought was really, really good was this piece around, you know, you being who you are and really um, taking charge of that for yourself um, and not letting anybody kind of step on you um, or tell you what to do. And this, um, you know, this jealousy piece, you know, I, I just had to, unfortunately, I have a friend from a long time. Um, we've been friends for about five years and her attitude wasn't good for me. And so I had to tell her, you know, we had to stop this relationship. And it was, you know, if she then can look inside and figure out what, what it was, then we can have this relationship again. But it's like this negative piece that you don't want to hold on to all that energy. And so it's important for this relationship to be fulfilled. And I know you're as a caregiver are public, you're like the caregivers are the hundred percent service oriented brands like they will do anything for their client or individuals in general because they're just naturally a service oriented individual um well, yeah go ahead you, you said something there that i think it's really important for people to get is that we all have choices as to who we let into our lives even even if it's family i by the way this is a really sensitive subject yes you you may have negative family members, and I'm going to encourage you. Listen, love on them where they are. I'm not telling you to to stop loving them, but you've got to realize what your threshold is and how it affects you. And if it's in a negative way, then you need to find some distance and some boundaries there. To could, because listen, you're not going to help anybody if you're angry, if you're short, if you're frustrated, if you're if you get pulled into the weeds as well. And so, you really got to find those ways to to find what works for you because those relationships and and I love what you said as well like if they come around you welcome them with open arms right we're not we're not here to say oh well we're not going to say oh now you're okay with me no we're not going we're not going to rub it in their faces we're going to love on them but you got to find out how that how that looks for you in a healthy way exactly so let me ask you this what is your greatest fear i think my greatest fear is 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 of is of being average and and being normal and you know that it's, that may sound weird, um, and I don't. I've I've tried to I've tried to do some introspection on this, and I don't think it's from. I'm not sure exactly where it comes from, but I've always felt like when I look around, like I feel some sadness when I see people that are kind of just eking through life and who are just kind of doing the bare minimum and who. They'll go to a job that they don't enjoy and they're not passionate about, but it pays the bills. And they come home and they're so exhausted. They sit in front of the TV and 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 you know and and just and that's their existence every day, day in, day out. And there there there's there's so much more out there. There really is. And and I'm not saying you know. And if you if you're living that way, that's okay. But I want to encourage you that you don't have to stay there. And so I don't ever want to become complacent. Now, now, by the way, content and complacent are two different things, right? And so I'm not telling you not to appreciate what you have or, or feel like that you're inadequate in any way. That's not the point at all. But I, I don't want to be average in that. I just take for granted everything in my life and I, and I stop trying to improve and stop trying to grow and stop trying to help more and more people. Oh, I love that. That is so profound, actually, because it's, mm. it's so true. Um, but, you know, to continue the conversation, let me ask you this. We all have mentors in a life. And yes. um, tell me a story about a mentor that helped you through some of the most difficult times in your life. So the biggest mentor in my life uh, is actually the founder of Life and Air. His name is Steve Cook. Um, here's a guy who has, I mean, not only is he brilliant as an individual, but he has the heart uh, just like I've never met anybody. No earthly person has made more of an impact on my life than him. And what he has done for me is really, I'll give you an example. Like when I, when I first, you mentioned in, in my intro, like I joined Life and Air in 2009 as a member, as a student, and Steve was my coach. Mm -hmm. And I remember part of, the, part of that, that program was a mastermind. And he told me, uh, hey, I want you to be part of this group. And now let me 
at my life at that point when you read the intro that that was me i had a, i had a full time job i had never done any real estate investing i had no business experience um i literally had this 9 to 5 that i'm trying to figure out a way to get out of and and nothing else more to my name and he said and and by the way some of the, those people in that mastermind were nationally known investors nationally known um business owners like really heavy hitters and i'm like steve i am honored that you invite me in but i'll tell you what i am nowhere near the kind of quality person you're looking for. I'm not on that level. And he said, I disagree. Maybe you haven't shown those things yet, but I see something special in you. And I know that you'll be a contributor there and, and you will provide value to that group. And when somebody like that, you know, we, we're, we're, there's this theme of support here, right? And, and it was given to me. And when somebody like that, who's successful, who is co- and like, and it, he's coaching you know, the country's biggest investors, biggest business owners. He had done, you know, 104 real estates his first two years in the business. Like when somebody like that says something to you like that, it does something inside you. It stirs you. It moves you in a way that like, you're not going to let that person down, number one. But number two, it gives you this incredible confidence. Like, wow, like what do they see in me that I don't see? And it's, and, and so that mentorship and he, and he mentored me through that, through that process as I, as I was with him. Um, has now actually resulted in us being business partners. Like I run Life in Air with him, um, which I never in a million years would have thought. Like never. And so I can't, I can't overemphasize the quality of fi- and, the, and the, the importance of finding a good quality mentor. Oh, that that's huge. Um, there are times in your life, I think that's happened to me too, where sometimes you just don't see the great things you're doing or the capacity that you actually have. And it takes somebody else telling you about that to get that energy and that confidence in yourself to push through difficult times, you know, that you have, or, you know, push through these ups and downs that we each have. And, and, and so grateful to these people that are, you know, just believe in everything, you know, believe in you, believe in, in themselves as well and help you through those, those, those times. And like you said, now, you know, you, you, you run it with him. That's, that's pretty incredible. He saw that from the second he, he met you. So that's, that's pretty amazing. So let me ask you this three lessons learned from this entire experience that you've had at life on air. The first one is, um, get comfortable being uncomfortable. (laughs) And so I, when I first started running the, the, the company, I had zero experience. And I told Steve, I'm like, Steve, you realize like I'm completely unqualified for this, right? And he, and and he said, yeah, I know, but you'll figure it out. And so you have to be comfortable learning new things, even when there are things at stake. And so I, I, I took that on. And so find ways to make yourself uncomfortable on a regular basis. And I think you'll, you'll, you're eventually that comfort zone for you will, will expand, you know, and this is kind of funny, but like I've even done things like I've taken improv classes. Um, I took a comedy class because on the, on the last day of, and by the way, I'm not funny at all, but on the last day of class, we had to get up on stage and tell jokes to a real audience. Like this is like stand up comedy completely out of my comfort zone. So find these ways to be uncomfortable because it'll help you grow so much quicker. Number two, um, realize that you, whether it's running a business or running a life or whatever, it's all about people. It is so, so, so about people. Um, and I'll tell you early on in my life, and even somewhat to this day, like my natural state of being is a little bit more introverted where I, um, I recharge more when I'm reading a book by myself or, you know, and those kinds of, or walking my dog. But what I've realized is it's life is so much richer with people. And the better you are about understanding how you can help people and how they, and how, it, and, you know, good and people want to help other people and, and take advantage of that in a way that uh, everybody gets better is, is huge. Um, and the, that'd be the second thing I'd say is like, realize, you know, really tap it into the people uh, component of your life. And the third is really just be truthful to yourself and have, have a vision for what you want. And so what that means is like really figuring out what do, what do I want my, my life to look like? And then everything else around that will be kind of positioned in a way to help you move towards that. And the things that don't fit, we'll get rid of them, you know, cut them out, ask yourself, is this getting me closer to my vision or further away and have a vision in every part of your life and, and make it in a way that's really concrete. So for instance, you know, you might say, I want a great relationship with my spouse. Okay. That's wonderful. 
But what does that look like? Tell me exactly what that looks like because, you know, couple A versus couple B versus couple C, they're all going to have different definitions. So decide what it is for you. And then that way, I think that that's going to be the guiding force or the, or the compass in your life to, to really help you tie all, everything together in a, in a cohesive package. I love that. Love that. Because I, I was talking to a friend of mine this weekend and she was telling me how, you know, she would limit her belief on something and not, and, and she didn't want to like make assumptions of her vision because she, she was going to be disappointed if they didn't happen. Right. And I think for me, it was the opposite. I would be like, I'm scared to imagine something because I know it's going to happen. <laughs> and so, right. And so setting those expectations for yourself, whether you're one way or the other is, is really important. So I, I love, I love that. And the more clear you are, you're right. The more clear you are, the more exact that will happen in that way. You're so you're so on with that statement. And I want to unpack something you just said. So important. So many people will not take the time to plan what they want because once it's planned out and once it's in writing and once it's in front of them, that means they can fail. But let me but the part nobody thinks about is if you don't have that, you're already failing because you don't know what the finish line is and you don't know what the target is. And so would you rather have the lights on and know whether you miss a target or not, or would you just rather shoot, throw darts in the, in the dark? Um, that's, that's not the, 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 you may think it's safer, but it's not, it's, it's actually, exactly. you gotta, you gotta have that information. You gotta, you gotta move towards it. So what's next for you? Where, like, we're talking about visions. What's your vision for yourself in the next five, 10 years from now? Yeah. So my, my vision is, and this is really funny because I just, I was just talking with a couple of friends about this and we we're talking about retirement and I, I, I could retire now, but mm -hmm. I, I, I don't want to. I love what I do. I tell people all the time, like what I do with Life and Air, uh, I would do for free. You know, I love getting to speak around the country. Now, part of my vision, by the way, has me traveling no more than 30 days a year uh, for all of my business related stuff uh, because I have a family at home. You know, uh, I have I have my I have my wife and I have three three girls, and and I love being around my family, and and I don't want to be around that. Uh, sorry, not I don't want to miss that and not be around that. Um, and so for me, my, my vision is really continuing to impact people on a larger scale. We're launching a bunch of new stuff with life and air that I'm really excited about that is going to impact more people. And ultimately, like I'd say my life is all about impact. Like I, I, I try to have it all about impact and, and it's, I'm, I'm just constantly looking for ways to impact more and more people. Um, now that's, that has had the shift over the years. And what I mean by that is like, I used to be a coach and I've realized I can't, coach and run the company and do the speaking and, mm -hmm. and, and, and so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I have stepped out of the coaching role, um, to, to be, a, to elevate myself to a higher level, but like, that's, that's for me what it's all about. And my hope is that it's, it's, I'm on, I'm on this path now, but it's just amplified and it's, and it's, exp, you know, it's, it's exponentially increased over the, over the more I do it and the more time, because I want those people to now to impact other people as well. Like, I don't want to just, I don't want to just impact somebody and have it be about them. I want them to go and impact their circles of friends and family and people that care, they care about. And then that's, that's awesome to me. That's that pe pebble in the pond. Well, I love that you recognize that, you know, and you s decided, okay, I'm consciously going to leave this and consciously uh, put all my efforts here and here, because I think a lot of people, mm. they may do several things, but they, they don't understand that sometimes you have to give something up or not do it anymore and focus on the others that give you more fulfillment. Right. And, and that you can feel like you can impact more people. And so I think, so I think that's a really good point that you said there. But, um, the other thing I wanted to ask you really quickly is where can people find you? Where are you at? Where are you in on social media? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I spend most of my time on social media on Facebook. Um, mm -hmm. and if you want to get, if you want to learn more about life in air, there's life in air.com or we do have a private group on, on Facebook. It's just, you could just search life in air. Uh, and again, that's spelled just L I F E O N A I R E. And it's a private group of, of a bunch of people. You know, we have a few thousand people in there that are all helping each other, you know, to the point we talked about earlier, just helping each other live their, live their visions, get further along with what they are trying to do, accomplish their goals and help each other do that uh, along the way. And so, yeah, I'd love for anybody to be part of that. And I, the more, the more, the merrier. Thank you, Jason, for being on the Brand Therapist podcast. I so enjoyed the conversation. Thank you, everybody, for listening today. And I wish you all the best. And I can't wait to see, you know, what, what life brings, life on air life brings to you in the future. So honored to be here. I love what you're doing and, and, and what you stand for. So thank you. Thank you.